Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And boy, oh boy, did Ubiquity start the new year off with a couple of huge releases. Now, we're going to talk about two things in this video. We're going to talk about Unify OS 4.1.13, and we're going to talk about Network 9.0.108, or as we're calling it, Network 9. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pull up my demo UDM SE, which is right here. And you can see uh, we're running this here. And if we, uh, I'll pull up the community just to show you real quick that these are released. All right, so here we are. We're on community.ui.com slash releases. And we're looking for this official tag, right? That's, that's how we know that it's GA that it's not early access or any other program when we've got this green official tag on there. So if we scroll down, we are running a dream machine and you can see that this was an official release four days ago if we keep uh, scrolling down. And it may have not been actually released officially four days ago, but this thread has been open for four days. And then the Unify Network Application 9 is now official. It was... <coughs> um, you know, pre-release, and then today was officially released. So this is Monday, January 6, 2025. So let's hop back over to the old UDM SE. Don't pay attention to this high ISP latency. I've been messing around with my network. Well, let's take a look at the release notes first for Unify OS 4.1.13. And it adds support for directory in integration, custom certificates, BGP, NetFlow, and packet captures. So they've added a lot of functionality there. Here you're going to be able to integrate with Microsoft Intra, Active Directory, Google Secure LDAP, LDAP, or Jump Cloud LDAP. We're going to be able to upload custom certificates. So if we want to either access these devices from outside and we've got the ports forwarded correctly, or if we have the DNS also set up internally and we want to access it, we can use a fully qualified domain name and we will get a padlock. Life will be good. We won't get that insecure message. It is important to know that the custom certificate for the hotspot portal, it is not done yet here. So we still have a workaround for that. If you need it, you can hit us up over at willyhow.com. We install these for people all the time for their hotspot portal. But having it come to the UI is going to be a game changer for Unify. They've now added BGP, and we'll take a look at that. It, I don't think it works on all consoles, right? So that's what you need to be aware of is that maybe sometimes these don't, some of these options aren't running on all consoles. By default, the bundled network application is 8.6.9, but you can see we're running 9 the 9.0 release and here's what we're talking about on some of this so if you're running a udm pro se or pro max you can use bgp that is what is currently supported on the udm has now added support for hotspot 2.0 or passpoint of course we've got the directory integrations we've got the custom certificates uh, custom smtp servers for notifications added system log events for unexpected shutdowns, that's nice, added support for NetFlow, added support for packet captures, added support for IP version 6 traffic identification and DNS, DNS shield. If you want to know more about IP version 6, if you'd like me to put some information out, uh, some videos about that, let me know down in the comments. Added support for showing IP addresses for admin changes in the system logs for remote connections, added disk warnings, Added support for sending country restriction events to remote syslog servers. So now if those countries try that you've got blocked, if we are notifying it, now that can be sent to the remote syslog servers. Support for network application system logs will be available in a future network application release. Added support for camera sharing through identity. Added support for sending threat or ad block detections to remote syslog servers. So they're doing a lot to the underpinnings of this besides just the network application. Improve the storage reformat process. 
improved compatibility with third-party SFP modules, improved WAN resiliency when changing from DHCP to PPPoE, improved the user experience when restoring backups. I mean, they have just added a lot of improvements. Here for the UDMSE, they improved the PoE compatibility, improved the SFP module connection resi resiliency, updated the traffic identification signatures, and renamed Unify OS settings to Unify OS Control Plane, previously only visible via the Site Manager. And then they've got some bug fixes in here. So let's take a look at a couple of these real quick. Let's take a look at the BGP. So for that, we're going to go to Settings. We're going to go to Routing. And now we have this BGP, BGP tab. And we can name it now. We do have to upload the configuration file. And they tell us right here that it should use the FRR BGP configuration. And it typically has a .conf file extension. If you want to see BGP on Unify, let me know down below. And we will definitely, we will definitely do that if I have enough interest. What else do we have here? Custom certificates. So to get to your custom certificates, you are going to go to your control plane and you're going to go to console and you're going to scroll down here to certificates. And this is where you can upload the TSL or SSL certificates. People are going to call it SSL certificates forever. Trying to say TLS sometimes when you've been doing this for a long time, sometimes it gets a little iffy. Now, if you want to see me uh, purchase a certificate and do this, also let me know. If, if we've got enough people interested, I will do that one too. All right, back to our Unify OS. We're not going to do anything right now with the directory integration, but I am working on a project for that. So hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to capture some of that. I'm not going to make any promises. All right, over here to Unify network nine let's take a look at the release notes so one of the big ones you're seeing a lot of videos on is the zone based firewall the cyber secure the network application api so we're going to take a look at the zone based firewall and one thing to know is it will take a backup when you do this and if for some reason you don't like it you don't want to use it you will have to restore to that previous backup. You will lose all of the settings though that you've made after you enabled that. So make sure that if you're going to mess around with this and you think you might go back, don't make any other changes that you don't document in case you need to roll back to that. And the goal of this is to simplify some of these setups when it comes to firewall rules and things like that. The Cyber Secure by Proofpoint is a paid service. It is available for all Unify Cloud Gateways besides the Express and the UXG Lite. So it does not work. There's not available on the Express or the UXG Lite. The existing IDS IPS that Ubiquity provides is still provided for free. So don't freak out. They're not getting rid of it. They're just adding this as another option, as a paid option. And you can see here is that you do have to have Unify Cloud Gateway 4.1.8 or 4.1.3 or newer for that to work. All right. The ne next thing they've done is they have opened up the API. And there are all types of things that you can do with the API, such as custom hotspot uh voucher integration. We have a rolling Wi-Fi key for conference rooms. If you're interested in that, let, let me know. Tim actually handles all of that. I'm just kind of the conduit for that. They added support for reordering dashboard widgets, added the ability to locate or restart devices from the device tab when hovering, added the ability to edit VLANs in the port manager VLAN page. Now, if you are running your own network server, your own build, they are now supporting MongoDB 8 and Java 21. Let's see. They added so much stuff. Here's a good one. Added support for third-party networks and IP and Mac access control lists. Added a warning when configuring a site-to-site -site VPN with overlapping subnets. 
added QoS in the routing section within settings, but that does require you to switch to the new zone-based firewall. Added support for override WAN monitors in the BGP configuration. Added support for link aggregation for the Enterprise Fortress Gateway and the UXG Enterprise. Allow duplicate remote IP addresses when using different WANs on route-based IPsec site-to-site -site networks. That's that's kind of that's kind of nice. That's kind of big. So that means that you can have remote networks if you're using route-based site to, uh, IPsec site-to-site, -site, so they can have the same IP addresses out there. That that's huge. So they've they've done a lot a lot of improvements here and a lot of bug fixes. So let's take a look at the zone-based firewall. So to get there, you're going to go to settings. You're going to go to security. And right here, we've got this button. And you can see all of my, my rules down here. We've got this button that says click to upgrade. And when we do that, we get this cool little this cool little graphic that tells us about the zones. So the VPN zone contains VPN servers site to site. The DMZ is, is optionally used for public servers that should be reachable from the internet. And you'll notice that they are, and my props, props go to Ubiquity, because they are showing this diagram the way that it should be, where traffic goes in, but this is not necessarily establishing connections by itself out without something coming in right so that's the whole point of a dmz a demilitarized zone which and i don't know if they're gonna if the world's gonna want that that language change or not but you have a server in your dmz it can't just go out and start pushing traffic out in a true dmz something has to come in and request it from the server first so it just can't go send unsolicited requests out it's not allowed it can only respond to requests that are going in here you've got your external zone and your internal zone and you have the gateway here's that it will make a migration backup automatically if you don't like it you can restore we talked about that earlier <laughs> certain existing firewall rules might be migrated to multiple policies that's totally fine and all existing networks will be migrated to the internal zone. Let's go ahead and hit upgrade. And we are now upgraded. So now it keeps this nice little chart up here at the top. You can see where we took the backup, 738 on January 6, 2025. We've got the zone names. We can create a custom zone name if needed. I'm really going to dig into this because while it is easier... <laughs> It is a departure from what we've been doing for the last however many years you've been watching me and other creators that that you know work on Unify. It is a, a different way now of thinking about how to create those those rules. So DMZ allows return traffic, allows return traffic, allows return traffic, and does not allow all. I'm very happy with this source and destination here and then come down here and take a look at the rules that are in here. So I'm really, I'm really happy with this. And I think a lot of you are going to be really happy with this as well, because it will make some of these things that we do. I think it'll make it a lot easier. So full video coming on that soon. Now, the other thing that I wanted to look at, the IDS IPS right here. I don't have this running IDS IPS currently because it is nested inside of my other network, but we can turn on IDS IPS and we can select the networks here. Sometimes when we turn this on, we will just do notify so that we can see what's going on for the first couple days so that we're not blocking legitimate traffic and nobody's there to respond to it. And you can see all of the options that U Ubiquity provides. We can actually do notify and block. We'll hit apply changes there. We can also come back on and turn our 
region blocking back on and we can do China and Russia. We'll hit save there and apply those. And now that's that's running. That's how that's how easy that was. If you want to do the, the proof point, if we click here to activate, it's going to come up. It's going to tell us it's ninety nine dollars per year per site. You get the ability to detect and block advanced threats. There's up to 55,000 signatures and there's a little asterisk there and it says depends on the gateway model and we can learn more. There are 30 to 50 new signatures daily. There's a dedicated proof point threat research team and it also participates in the Microsoft Active Protections Program coverage. I am not currently going to activate this. I'm going to wait until I'm ready to do a video specifically on this, but just know that this paid assurance is now available for multiple gateways. And if we click this, let's see if it tells us which it does. So when we look at the supported models, let me zoom this in a little bit for you. So the EFG and the UXG Enterprise are going to have 95,000 plus signatures. The UDM Pro Max is going to have 55,000. The SE will have 55,000. Most of these are going to have 55,000 until we get down to the, the UXG Lite. It does not run on. It does not run on the Unify Express. The UDM and the UDR are going to have 20,000 plus signatures. And that's a lot of signatures. So back over to our UDM SE. The last thing that we're going to take a quick look at is the API. So let's see where I think I ran into this. And if it's not here, yeah, I think we got to go back here. We'll reset that control plane API getting started right here. So we've got this, they've got a getting started and it tells us how to use the API and then there is network API documentation and check this out it's pulling it right from the console and it tells us how to pull things out of Unify and if we expand this it's going to tell you a lot more of the parameters a lot more of the options that go along with that so I am looking forward to people getting really creative with this API. I know we're going to dig in now that this API is officially available. Let me know what you think about this. This is a, a sizable, sizable update, adding a lot of features. And man, they, they hit it hard with Unify OS, this latest update, and with Unify Network 9. So let me know, are you going to use these features? What features are you looking forward to? Are you going to use the API? Are you going to use the zone-based firewall? I plan on touching it all and taking you along for the journey. But if you've got any questions for now, put it down in the comments, and we will, we will go through all of this. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you want to migrate to the zone-based firewall and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with somebody talking through now all of the options and, and learning it. If you need help with your voice over IP, your wireless, your security, otherwise, or your storage, all things IT, if we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. Head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's there on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to start a discussion about this with other people, head on over to community.willyhow.com, sign up, and start the conversation today. Once again, I'm Willie. Man, there's a lot in store this year. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.